Custom Performance Engineering Standback Tuner for the BMW 135, 335, and 535i's. A little demonstration first in a series of videos we hope to publish. What I'm showing you are the real-time logging capabilities of the Standback software. You're looking at engine RPM, map pressure, wastegate duty cycle, and timing change. So any changes in timing over stock. Uh, certainly no timing changes now. We're just cruising around, but you can see how the graphs scale as the values change, keeping everything in line. And we're going to demonstrate the uh, excellent boost control that uh, CB has developed for this car. We're in the CBE shop 135i. It's got down pipes and uh, full turbo back, actually full turbo back exhaust. So you'll get to hear the sound differences at the different boost levels. Right now, we're running at uh, six psi. So pay close attention to the uh, top right corner of the uh, logging software, standback software, showing the map pressure. You can see we're just cruising now, and map pressure is about 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Uh, as Jordan starts to uh, gun it, you'll see we're hitting 6 psi and holding. Isn't that great? And there's a little spike at the end and that's because the map sensor is located behind the throttle plate. So the throttle plate closes and the intake track, intake track is pressurized. It doesn't hurt the engine and that's basically the way this car runs. Okay, so now we're going to demonstrate a 1, 2, 3 shift at 6 psi, demonstrating the boost control. We're ready when you are, Jordan. Boost control flat as a plane cake. Perfect. No oscillation. Immediately snaps to 6 psi. Um, fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. I want to also point out that you can record these uh, data logs. You don't have to just view them in real time and uh, look back at them later so you can make changes and monitor your boost control and, and uh, you know, change the way boost comes on. And I'll demonstrate that in a, a future video. Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate how easy it is uh, with the standback to change the boost control and boost parameters. I simply go to the top left corner, select the configuration tab, get away from the real-time graphing, and you see we have two maps, primary map and secondary map. I'm going to go from 6 psi to 8 psi and send all the parameters. Okay, parameters are sent. Noting the uh, yellow bar on the bottom of the pay bottom of the screen, uh, parameters will be sent and parameters will be verified. It's a secondary control to make sure there's no problems. I want you to also notice that we uh, use a P, I, and D control loop to control boost. That's why we get such excellent control. And you can control those. Uh, you can change those parameters on this page as well. Control K, P, K, D, and K, I are the P, I, D parameters. So let's go back to the record page. And we've got our engine RPM, map pressure, timing, and wastegate duty cycle. And Jordan's going to demonstrate how we can hit 8 psi immediately, whenever you're ready. Spike state, there you go. Flaz pancake. Comes right off, no problems. Jordan, why don't you give it to him, why don't you give it to him again with a shift? So we show that. There you go. Perfect. See that? Spikes to nine, drops right back down to eight, and holds eight as long as we want. Now we're going to go to 10 psi. So again, we go back to the configuration page, select the primary map, hit 10 psi, and send the parameters. Again, this is the shop 135i. It's got the CPE uh, cast bell mouth down pipes and the CPE cat back exhaust, full stainless cat back exhaust. So you'll get to hear the sound differences at the different boost levels. Again, we're running at 10 psi. Parameters have been verified. We'll go back to the record page. Keep an eye on the uh, upper right corner. That's with map pressure. So we're going to show you 10 psi, but also try to listen and see if you can hear the sound difference between 6 psi, 8 psi, and 10 psi whenever you're ready. 
Look at that, flat as a pancake, 10 PSI. That's a lower RPM. You hear this exhaust really sing when Jordan gets up in the upper RPMs. Side, fly as that was about 5,500 RPM. I'm going to convince him to go to a lower gear so we can really get it to talk to us. He's downshifting, rev matching to downshift. You love that? It's addictive, that noise. Uh, slow down a little bit whenever you're ready, buddy. Watch the RPMs climb. It's a beautiful thing, it's a beautiful thing. And now we're going to go to 12 PSI. Now Jordan's done uh, the dyno tuning on this car, so we're controlling timing and fueling. It's not a recommendation that you just arbitrarily change boost. Uh, the map's already loaded for 12 PSI, so it's no problem for us to change the boost pressure. Uh, and we're developing maps that we can send out uh, for the various hardware configurations for your car. Um, so again, we do not recommend at all just going into the standback and changing the boost pressure. Uh, even though it is so easy, you can damage your vehicle if you're not careful. So uh, I'll, in a moment I'll show you how we make changes to uh, the fueling and the timing to handle the extra boost that we're loading up in the car. Again, factory boost level is uh, 8 PSI. We're going 50% uh, more than that, so we're at 12 PSI. And I'm going to show you again the real-time logs so you can see how well it holds boost to 12 PSI. And again, I want you to focus on the sound because it just gets more and more glorious as we up the boost, as it should be. What are you when you are, Jordan? There's 12 PSI. And that's a low RPM. But you can see there's no spiking appreciably. You go up to 13, but then it goes right down to 12 and holds steady. There's a rev match. Ready when you are. Sorry for the jiggling around, folks. This is an N54 at 12 PSI. So it's a little bit hard to hang on to. We love it, though. Isn't it great? Beautiful. Beautiful. Nothing like it. So after uh, showing you how easy it is to control boost and then mentioning that you know you don't want to just do that without controlling the fueling and the timing, uh, let me demonstrate that a little bit. So in order to change those parameters, we go down to the tune tab, bring up the tune page, and notice on the uh, left side of the screen you see boost, timing, uh, math, map, fuel pressure, and meth. Math is incorrect. It's for the this this standback is uh, applicable for several different vehicles, some of which have map sensors. BMW, of course, does not have a map sensor, so this actually is the scaling of the wide band. So it should just read AFR. But what you're noticing here when I click on that is uh, two maps. I've got a primary map and a secondary map. Uh, these again are scaling of the wide band sensors, and we'll change that uh, when the software is actually released. Um, note the yellow dot on the screen as that moves as Jordan depresses the, the, the throttle that's telling you where you are in the map so as we increase uh, map pressure uh, boost essentially we're adding or subtracting fuel and in this case uh, as our map voltage goes above 2.4 volts we start to add fuel and then we can add fuel uh, progressively as the map voltage increases uh, so this is a, a very easy uh, tool to use if you're a tuner and experienced with uh, engine management. But this uh, absolutely allows full control of the fueling and timing in the N54. Uh, so one more thing about the standback uh, that makes it uh, very unique is the ease with which we can connect to it. Uh, the standback uses USB connectivity so it's hot swappable to any laptop. This is an XP, Windows XP laptop. It also runs on basically any version of Windows. And I'm gonna remove the USB cable from the back. So we're pulling it out. And you see the graphs have completely stopped. And that's because there's no connectivity with the standback, so we can't read it. If I just go back and plug the standback back in, you can 
go back to the software. I have to re-enable the graphs by selecting this little checkbox. And as soon as I do that, the graphs start back up again.